from getting girls to spread to their legs, having a whole town massacred, and essentially ruling the entire world. Lately the words manipulation, Machiavelli, Sigma etc. have become buzzwords. With 12-year-old Sigmas try to manipulate their parents to buy Hustlers University. Even in comment sections, you'll see people say, I manipulated my whole class, or some other weird shit. But my point today is that manipulating people to achieve your desires in real life, actually real. Well actually e.g. I watched how to manipulate like Iano Koji I'll get your little sister with that. But on real note, is manipulation that easy? Or is it all just anime plot writing? Today I am going to use Johan Liebert, Ayano Koji Kiyotaka, and Lelich. Dissect their manipulation and then show how you would do these acts IRL while explaining all the psychology and tactics behind it. Starting with Johan Liebert, his manipulative tactics resemble what psychologists identify as dark triad personality traits, a combination of narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. If you guys want to know what type you are, I'll leave a dark triad test in the description. Comment your answers as it'll be interesting to see if there's any really twisted individuals up in here. Continuing, his ability to charm, deceive, and strategize is an extreme portrayal of what is known in social psychology as Machiavellian intelligence. Real-life Machiavellianism doesn't endow one with Johann's almost hypnotic influence, but it can be seen in individuals who are adept at controlling and manipulating situations to their advantage through a strategic understanding of human behavior. In the workplace, for instance, a Machiavellian individual might employ tactics like ingratiation, using flattery or strategic agreement to gain favor. While not as dramatic as Johann's manipulations, the essence is the same, the Machiavellian employee creates a facade that appeals to their targets, fostering a false sense of trust to maneuver them into a position that benefits the manipulator. So now let's look at specific tactics. Johann Liebert's tactic of gaslighting is not just for dramatic effect, it's a serious form of mental manipulation used by abusers to make victims doubt their own memory, perception, and sanity. In the series, he convinces a woman that she's not who she believes she is, destroying her sense of self. Similarly, in real life, a gaslighter might repeatedly dismiss their partner's concerns or recollections, insisting events happen differently, leading the victim to question their reality. This works because it targets the very foundations of our confidence, memory and perception. So is it real? I'd say in anime it was very exaggerated and you won't be getting results like him but it can come in handy. Charisma, the disguise of malice. Charisma, wielded by Johan, is a double-edged sword. It's a trait we laud in leaders and influencers, but in the wrong hands, it can be destructive. Charisma allows manipulators to draw people in and gain their trust quickly. For instance, a charismatic leader might use their allure to rally people for a cause that serves hidden nefarious purposes. The reason charisma works so well is that it taps into our natural desire to be led and to belong to something larger than ourselves. So you can use this exactly like Johan in real life, as long as you're charismatic you'll attract people to yourself and how you want to use those people are up to you. Dependency, the invisible handcuffs. Dependency isn't inherently negative, it's a fundamental part of human relationships. However, when twisted into a manipulation tactic as Johan does, it becomes a shackle. In the real world, an employer might create a scenario where an employee feels they can't leave their job because they're made to feel uniquely valued, yet are also reminded of how unmarketable they are outside the company. So this tactic is effective because it isolates the victim from alternatives and creates a fear of loss that's hard to break free from. So this tactic gets a okay from me, you can use it if you're a boss or on your girlfriend. Exploiting fears, the cruel conductor. Johan's exploitation of his victim's deepest fears is a testament to his psychological prowess. Real-life counterparts might include a scam artist who preys on the elderly by stoking fears of financial insecurity, pushing them to invest in fraudulent schemes. The power of this approach lies in its primal force, fear is a fundamental driver of human behavior, and when triggered, it can overshadow logic and reason. This one's self-explanatory, I'd also say this is valid but against someone who's smart and strong-willed you'll get smoked. Ayano Koji Kiyotaka presents another facet of manipulation, strategic emotional intelligence. Unlike Johan, Ayana Koji's approach is to appear unremarkable, thus avoiding drawing attention to himself while subtly influencing outcomes. His manipulation relies heavily on an advanced form of social intelligence, a concept deeply rooted in psychological theories of interpersonal relations. Real-life parallels can be drawn with covert leaders, individuals who lead from behind the scenes, quietly influencing and guiding decisions without taking overt credit. 
These individuals use their understanding of social dynamics and the emotions of others to guide group decisions. A scientific underpinning of this kind of manipulation is found in the theory of planned behaviors, where a manipulator might influence others' attitudes, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control, all factors that determine one's behavioral intentions, according to psychologist Isaac Agin's theory. For example, a skilled negotiator might subtly alter someone's attitude toward a deal by highlighting its popularity, influencing subjective norms, or its ease, altering perceived behavioral control. But let me go into some specific examples. Emotional detachment. Tactic in story, Ayano Koji maintains a calculated distance from everyone, never allowing emotions to cloud his judgment. This allows him to manipulate others without being swayed by personal feelings. Example, imagine a corporate negotiator who never shows anger or elation during discussions. This person can keep the other party off balance because they can't read his emotional responses, making it easier to secure a favorable deal. Real-life comparison, emotional detachment in negotiation and strategic planning is realistic and effective. Top-level executives, diplomats, and even military strategists often use this approach to maintain objectivity and avoid being manipulated by their emotions or by others. 2. Observation and Adaptation Tactic in story, Ayano Koji is a keen observer, using his insights into people's behavior to manipulate social dynamics without revealing his intent. Example, a social engineer might observe the habits of a target, such as their favorite coffee shop, and casually bump into them repeatedly to establish familiarity. By adapting to the target's schedule, the social engineer gains trust and can extract information or influence the target's decisions. Real-life comparison, this is a highly realistic tactic. In real life, intelligence agents, undercover officers, and even con artists employ acute observation and adapt their behavior to gain trust and manipulate individuals. 3. Strategic Competence Tactic in story, Ayano Koji selectively exhibits his skills, remaining underestimated and revealing just enough talent to achieve his goals, keeping his true abilities hidden. Example, a political strategist may intentionally lose small battles to lull the opposition into a false sense of security, only to execute a well-planned strategy that wins the war. Real-life comparison, Sun Tzu's The Art of War advises leaders to appear weak when they are strong, and strong when they are weak. This is a time-tested tactic in politics, business, and warfare, thus it's a realistic and effective method of manipulation. 4. The Art of Timing Tactic in story, Ayano Koji waits for the optimal moment to act, ensuring that his interventions are both surprising and decisive. Example, a lawyer might withhold a piece of exculpatory evidence until late in a trial to create a dramatic turn in the case, thereby influencing the jury's perception. Real-life comparison, the art of timing is an essential strategy in many professions. It's realistic and effective because surprise and timing can shift the momentum in business, law, and personal interactions. 5. Calculated social interactions. Tactic in story, he carefully manages relationships, playing the role of a leader, follower, or outlier as necessary to further his goals. Example, a consultant might ingratiate themselves with different departments within a company, acting as a confidant to some and a subordinate to others, all to strategically influence company decisions from within. Real-life comparison, in corporate environments, politics, and even in day-to-day -day social scenarios, the ability to navigate different social roles for strategic advantage is not only realistic but also a hallmark of social intelligence and manipulation skills. 6. Misdirection and Secrecy Tactic in story, Ayano Koji never reveals his full intentions, creating an aura of mystery that keeps others guessing and defensively reacting. Example, a magician uses misdirection, focusing the audience's attention on one hand while the other performs the trick. Similarly, a business might divert attention to a less important product launch while preparing for a major market disruption. Real-life comparison, misdirection is a core tactic in magic shows, military strategy, and competitive business practices. Keeping true intentions hidden is an effective way to catch competitors off guard, making it very realistic. Lastly, let's talk about the GOAT. Lelich's use of his geas to compel absolute obedience is, of course, pure fantasy. However, his character's underlying understanding of motivation and psychological vulnerabilities has a basis in reality. Lelich often exploits people's desires and fears, a tactic mirrored in the science of persuasion and compliance. Robert Cialdini's principles of persuasion such as reciprocity, commitment and consistency, and social proof reflect this. While no one can command absolute obedience in real life, one can use these principles to increase compliance.
For instance, a marketer might use the principle of reciprocity by offering a free sample or a favor, expecting that the recipient will feel compelled to return the favor in the form of a purchase or a sign-up. Looking at these examples through the lens of neuroscience, manipulation, and persuasion are all about influencing the decision-making processes in the brain. This involves the prefrontal cortex, where most of our rational decision-making takes place, and the limbic system, which is responsible for our emotions and reward processing. Effective manipulators, whether ethically or unethically, know how to appeal to both areas. They create scenarios that make their suggestion appear as the most rewarding decision, triggering a dopamine response that biases the decision-making process in their favor. In essence, manipulation in real life relies on understanding and influencing the cognitive biases that guide human behavior. The halo effect, for example, can be exploited by presenting oneself in a certain light to affect people's perception of subsequent information. A good first impression can make one's ideas more palatable later on, something that skilled politicians or business leaders might use to their advantage. While anime exaggerates these concepts to create compelling narratives, the core principles can be applied in real life, albeit with more subtlety and complexity. It is a testament to the sophistication of human psychology that even our exaggerated fictional portrayals of manipulation have roots in the very real science of how we influence one another. So for all you guys who ask me, how can I manipulate like a Yano Koji to get a girlfriend? Short answer you can't, but depending on the situation you could possibly cook. I'm a cut now piece.